Have you heard of Rosebud Baker? I've never heard of her. Uh, is, that, um, is that a guy? Uh, Rosemary's Baby? Rosemary's Baby, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah oh, she's like funny? Yeah, she's funny. Nah, I'm not into that. God, my nipples got hard. Wow. <laughs> I'm really hoping I can keep my fucking thoughts together. I, I started intermittent fasting this week. Uh, I like to call it white Ramadan. Um, that's, that's what I like to call it. Um, I'm gonna say one thing about COVID and then that's it, all right? Because I've been in New York for a year and in New York, we would get on our rooftop every night at 7 p.m. at the beginning of the pandemic, and we would clap for the healthcare heroes. That's what we would do, okay? Just jump up on our fucking fire escapes and this'll fix it, you know? <laughs> it was a nice thing. It was for a month. And then another month went by. And then another month went by. And then everybody was dead. And uh, <laughs> we were still clapping. I was like, this is starting to feel like we're cheering for the losing team, folks. Uh, and don't get me wrong, I think it's a very sweet gesture if, um, you, if you don't have COVID. Uh, but if I had COVID and I'm sitting in a hospital bed surrounded by people who can't cure me and every night I'm listening to them get a fucking applause break, <laughs> I'd start to take it a little personally. I'm lying on my deathbed. I gotta FaceTime my family to say goodbye. And they start clapping for the bitch holding up my iPad. <laughs> I'd be like, we're unplugging everything. <laughs> I'm sorry to go for the healthcare heroes right away, but we've been sucking their dicks for so fucking long. <laughs> it's like, sorry if I don't wanna clap for the only people who kept their jobs. Did you guys see the video? There was a viral video of the nurses dancing to cheer up COVID patients. <laughs> Little insensitive, right? They can't breathe. I was like, do you guys walk a tightrope to cheer up the MS patients? What the fuck? <laughs> Just look what I can do day at the hospital? I called up my sister, who's a nurse, I was like, Hey, what's louder? Is it the ventilators or the sound of you guys patting yourselves on the back for your TikTok moves? <laughs> that's, all, that's all I wanted to say about that. <laughs> um, I gotta get something else out of the way. I am straight. Uh, I just, just got a real gay voice. <laughs> I have like a pussy eating voice. It is <laughs> real set of <laughs> pipes up here. <laughs> I have the kind of voice where like, if we met over the phone, you'd save the number in case you need a tire change. <laughs> it's fucked up. It doesn't match my face at all. It's like, I feel like God did a rush job where he like put it all together, didn't press play. You know, none of it matched. And he just threw me out in the world with like John Goodman's voice box. And now I look like I'm in the babysitter's club and I open my mouth and you're like, oh, she sucked dick on a megabus for sure. <laughs> so I, I am into men, I just, um, I don't know why. Uh, I do find men fascinating though. They're fascinating, right? Like if you, if you put jizz under a microscope, I'm pretty sure you could see each individual sperm giving you advice you never asked for. <laughs> it's a fun fact. It is amazing to me the shit you guys think we don't know. All my life, I have been treated by men like an Alzheimer's patient that got loose and needs to be returned to her home. That is the vibe. I've gotten that my whole life. I had a man explain to me what paint does. 
Not in some scientific way. I mean, I walked into a paint store, which would suggest I know where the fuck I am. <laughs> I wasn't asking where to sign up for bingo. I wasn't like, is this Benjamin Moore's house? <laughs> I walked in, I hand him a can of paint over the register. He goes, all right, you're, you're gonna wanna put this on the wall. I was like, yeah, I'm not gonna shampoo my dog with it. What? <laughs> Am I wearing a fucking helmet right now? What's going on? So I've always had really terrible taste in men, um, or at least I used to. I, I, love, uh, I love a challenge, you know, so I love an unavailable guy. Those are great, right? I was with this one guy who kept calling me multiple women's names. And I was like, oh, he's just trying to throw me off. I was like, if you think your emotional distance is gonna push me away. <laughs> I had an absent father. I've trained my whole life for this. I'm like a succulent. I thrive on neglect. Let's do this, bitch. <laughs> Put me in the windowsill for three years. I'll never die. <laughs> After him, I went out with this guy who was a, he was an abusive alcoholic, which is a very tough combo, right? Especially for him, because he was always like way too drunk to land a punch. Uh, <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I was just like, I'm already enabling you. Like, do I have to fucking lean in? What's... <laughs> Let's get it together, whiskey fists. <laughs> I should have seen that one coming. Uh, I really should have. I mean, he had a fedora collection, so... <laughs> yeah, if you're, if you're dating a man that dresses like Johnny Depp in the 90s, I'm looking at you, buddy. Uh, <laughs> You're gonna catch one. You are. <laughs> Duck and cover, bitch, it's coming. <laughs> when it does, you're gonna feel like you walked into a wind chime. You're like, how many bracelets are you fucking wearing? <laughs> Did you go to Claire's? What? <laughs> I can't tell if this is a domestic dispute or an enchanted forest. I, where am I? I still listen to Chris Brown's music. I just want to say that <laughs> for the record. <laughs> People ask me, they're like, how can you listen to Chris? You guys shaking your heads already. I can see the white women. They're like, no, no, it's easy. I can tell you how I do it. Uh, my abuser never wrote a song I could dance to. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong, I danced, but it was really more of like a bob and weave, you know? <laughs> This is a fun crowd. Uh, some of you are evil and some of you just came from church and I'm excited. <laughs> We're gonna see where the line is tonight. <laughs> I spent a lot of time single for a while, just like flirting with guys on Instagram and you know, fucking around. And I remember this one guy, he reached out to me on Instagram, sent me this shirtless picture. It was, to this day, the greatest body I've ever seen in my entire fucking life. I mean, just, he had like a dick that started at his rib cage, you know? <laughs> just arrows pointing. I started to believe in God. I was like, that is an intelligent design. <laughs> and I went to his profile and I saw he was trans. And, um, and I turned him down, but, and I know it sounds like I turned him down because he was trans. It's not, that's not it. I turned him down because I'm looking for a man I can change. There's just not a lot left to do there, folks. <laughs> I'm looking for like a fucked up fixer upper. This is, this is like buying a house that's already been flipped. I can't, <laughs> can't take credit for that work. <laughs> I did try to, um, I tried to be gay for a second. I gave it a shot. Yeah, I went, uh, I, was, I went to liberal arts school, so. You do a semester of broads and uh... <laughs> I fucking hate that joke and I can't stop doing it. It's, it's Tourette's. I can't stop. Yeah, lesbian sex takes too long for me. That's, I don't have the patience for it. Really, it's like a story from a stoner. You're like, where is this going? 
this wandering we're doing. I, like an EDM song without the beat drop. <laughs> I don't know. I've, I, probably the longest relationship I've ever been in was five years. It's the longest I've ever been with anybody. And that was a rough breakup. Holy shit. God, I started mistaking people for my diary. You know, they'd call me up. How you doing? I'd just cry and sing. <laughs> it was fucked up, just reading them poems and shit. <laughs> the guy I was with, he had a very different reaction to the breakup. He, uh, he started fucking other people right away. <laughs> Which is, uh, you know, a lot of times when a guy starts fucking around right after you've been together, your friends will be like, he's just sad. And I'm like, well, there's no wrong way to mourn, but uh, that sort of feels like remembering 9-11 with a Jenga party, doesn't it? It's a little fucked up, if you ask me. I got so pissed. I knew it, too, because you, you know when your ex starts fucking other people the same way you know when something touches your foot in the ocean. Right? You just get this feeling, you're like, I can't see it, but something invaded my space. <laughs> All my girlfriends were like, no, 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 you need proof of something like that. That's, I was like, I don't need proof. I'm a woman. We were all witches once. <laughs> like, you want proof? My pussy twitched in the middle of the night. <laughs> I woke up and I knew. <laughs> That's my fucking proof. I called him up, I was like, I know what the fuck you're up to. <laughs> he was like, how would you know that? I was like, you've been sleeping with me for five years. There is so much of your DNA inside my body, I will never not know where the fuck you are. <laughs> I was like, we're twins now. <laughs> Some guys look terrified. And, uh, I want you to know that was the point. I, I do, I want to scare you. Because men think that they can lie to us when the fact is, if you sleep with us one time, your memories are imprinted in our bodies for the rest of our lives. That's just how a woman's body works. That's how intelligent our bodies are. If we breastfeed, our nipples can read the saliva and change vitamin levels to feed the baby. You guys piss and come out of the same tube. You're God's beta version, all right? I have some good news. I, uh, I fell in love last year with my soulmate. Yeah, it's excruciating to admit that. Um, it's embarrassing. I want it to pass. I'm hoping it passes. Uh, like a rash, if you just don't touch it. Um, I feel like falling in love is like, it's like farting in public, you know? Like it feels good if you're the one doing it. <laughs> Everybody around you is like, you stink. <laughs> Do that in your home, we live in a society. <laughs> yeah. I'm a little embarrassed by it too, because this is the first white guy I've been with in seven years. And I don't know if you've been paying attention, but it's not a great time to go back to white guys. <laughs> Every time he makes me come, I feel like I yelled, all lives matter. I'm like, shit. <laughs> Did it again. <laughs> they say once you go black, you'll never go back. It's not necessarily true, okay? It's that once you go black, you might go back. But white guys will seem gay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> let the white guys absorb that for a second. <laughs> Sometimes they get up to go cry in the bathroom. I'm sorry, it's just, it's not the same. You can't go from yelling Jamal to yelling Andy in bed. It doesn't have the same <laughs> ring to it. I bought him a pair of Jordans. <laughs> he put those on, I was like, ugh. This looks like when somebody tries to soup up a Honda Civic. <laughs> It's great though, he's a comic as well, which is nice, because we're building a life on a foundation of laughter. <laughs> it's something you can't buy a house with. 
Yeah, it's good though, having two comics in a relationship, you can just roast each other all day long. Nothing's off limits and we do that. That's all we do. We roast each other. We, we call it verbal pegging. Um, <laughs> I love it though, it's great. Like my, my guy, he's got a tremor in his hand. His hand, he can't help it. His hand shakes all the time. He's very weak and... Um, <laughs> so I have a lot of fun with that. Like I'll just record him trying to eat soup. <laughs> he looks like Bernie Sanders in an earthquake, you guys. He's just desperately trying. And then I'll send that to him in the middle of the day for no fucking reason. <laughs> Just be like, I'm never gonna breed with you. <laughs> Something sweet. <laughs> and he takes it so well, he's like, I'm gonna spank you for that. <laughs> I'm like, you'd miss. <laughs> so we got engaged on the third day of quarantine. And I said yes because I thought we had three months to live. <laughs> My husband and I, uh, sexually, we're complete opposites, okay? Total opposite. I like to feel threatened in bed. <laughs> and he likes a lot of face holding, <laughs> eye contact, <laughs> so it works. <laughs> Yeah, I'm terrified. <laughs> Fuck, I thought I'd been choked until he was like, I want to build a future with you. <laughs> I was like, I can't fucking breathe. <laughs> this guy's gonna mess up my life. <laughs> I'm so happy I didn't marry like a really kinky guy. I just, it's a lifestyle that I'm not, I don't want to commit to, okay? I don't want to be 50 fucking in a lunge position. That is not <laughs> for me. No. Also, I feel like straight guys, like their fantasies don't really evolve. <laughs> you know, whatever they started fantasizing about as like a teen, that's it for the rest of their lives, like until they're dead. That's why a lot of them are in jail. Um, <laughs> was that too much? <laughs> no, I really, I, like, I just don't want to be accommodating that. You know what I mean? I don't want to be, dressing up in a fucking schoolgirl costume in my 40s, just shoving my aging tits into like some cheerleading uniform, like, like a grizzled cop trying to pose as pedophile bait. No thanks. Coming out of the bedroom like, I got a tight pussy and a loose tooth. <laughs> you know, I'm thinking about having kids because I'm pregnant. <laughs> Just kidding, I was when I wrote that joke. <laughs> Only one of those got delivered. <laughs> That's a fun one. I love getting people to clap for an abortion. It's really, it's my whole goal up here. You know, listen, I, I am, uh, am pro-choice, obviously but I do think abortion is murder. Yeah. The only difference is I'm fine with it. <laughs> yeah, the way I see it, if somebody invaded your home and demanded 18 years of your income, you'd kill that person. <laughs> and that would be a murder in self-defense. Yeah, Republicans, that's stand your ground law, okay? <laughs> I, I am liberal, just so you guys feel safe. And, um, but I also identify as liberal, but I also identify as funny. And those don't seem to go <laughs> together as much anymore. It's hard, because I've traveled all over the country doing comedy everywhere. And I've noticed that conservatives and liberals both, on either side, have no sense of humor whatsoever. It's like they have to agree with what you're saying to let themselves laugh at it. And it fucking sucks. <laughs> Okay, it's terrible. I feel like the more extreme people are getting in their politics, the more hypocritical they're becoming. Like if you look at David Duke, Grand Wizard of the KKK, I just feel like for somebody that hates homosexuals, Grand Wizard is like the gayest job title. 
I've ever fucking heard. He's on TV like, I don't like the homosexuals. Well, you're wearing a cape, Liberace. <laughs> Might want to rethink the costume. <laughs> I wonder what that meeting was like, where they're like, what do we call you, David? He's like, the Grand Wizard. He fucking... <laughs> <laughs> throws his cape behind him, does a little spin. They're like, he's a little f***y, but okay. Liberals are pretty hypocritical too, though. I don't know if you guys noticed this, but uh, we became really okay with victim blaming as long as a Republican got COVID. <laughs> That's what happened. We were like, when Trump got COVID, what was the first thing we said? What was he wearing? <laughs> Nothing? Okay, he was asking for it. <laughs> See, you guys bailed on that one, you did. <laughs> I, uh, I didn't march in the women's march, and um, I don't really feel that bad about it, actually. I don't. I don't know, if Republicans are trying to control my body, I'm not gonna let them control my weekend. <laughs> but I, do, I think a lot of, we've made a lot of progress, women, right? Last four years, I think we've made a lot of progress. They used to give us rape whistles, right? You just had a flashback. You went to another place in your mind. You went, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, rape whistles seems like a weird weapon, right? It's like, let the games begin. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you see somebody drowning and you throw that person a whistle, <laughs> you want that person to die. <laughs> that is clearly something that a dude came up with back in the day where it was like, some woman was rambling on and he was like, we were like, you know, it, like, yelling rape isn't working. And he's like, all right, trick people into thinking there's a football game going on. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Which is ironic, because the last people you want showing up to help at a rape is a team full of college athletes. <laughs> If I'm getting assaulted in a garage, I hear hike, hike. I, this just got worse. <laughs> I think the only thing more demeaning than getting raped is getting raped while you're blowing a whistle. <laughs> now I'm just the world's saddest tea kettle. <laughs> I have an anger problem. I don't, I don't have an anger problem. Other people have a problem with my anger. Yeah, I don't, I, it's my favorite emotion, I love it. Yeah. I know people say it's toxic, but so is cocaine. That feels fucking amazing. <laughs> Anger is really the cocaine of emotions, it is. It'll make you wanna start a business. It, <laughs> you can say what you want about anger, but love never convinced me I was strong enough to rip the hood off a moving car, okay? <laughs> yeah. I had to stop watching the news because of my anger, because it was just making me so fucking pissed off. I, was, I would wake up in the morning, I'd just watch CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, just, I feel alive. Like, <laughs> it was how I started my day. And I had to stop watching because a couple years ago there was a shooting at Walmart, and they wouldn't call this guy a terrorist, and I was losing my shit over it. I was like, this guy's a terrorist. Like, they, the only reason they wouldn't call him that is because he was white. But I feel like, the only difference between some guy from ISIS and a white mass shooter is, you know, ISIS are virgins by choice. That's... <laughs> yeah. I do think it would be hilarious, poetic justice, if some dude from ISIS did the deed, got to heaven, God opens the gates, he's like, here are your virgins. It's just 72 white guys who have <laughs> shot up a Walmart. <laughs> God's like, now fuck each other. <laughs> How many of you guys like your families? By round of applause. Okay, you guys were an honest crowd. There's like four of you that just clapped. 
I like that. That's good. I'm not a huge fan of my family. You know, I mean, they're fine, but I didn't pick them. They'd be way better if I could have picked them. That's how I feel about it. I mean, I know family is considered a Christian value, but I don't understand why, because Jesus left his. You guys just laughed at a rape whistle joke, so. Don't back out now. I don't know. I mean, once, you, once Jesus leaves Bethlehem, you don't hear about Mary and Joseph again. It's, he never had to go home for Christmas. He makes up a whole new dad. He's like, yeah, I've never heard of those two people in my whole fucking life. My dad's really important. You've never seen him. You'll never hear from him, but he's very important, so. And I get why he did that. He's trying to, you know, make a name for himself, trying to do cool shit. You can't do cool shit with your family around. They're gonna ruin it real fast. They'll show up like, your name's not even Jesus. It's Jesus, you know? <laughs> you can't turn water into wine with your virgin mom there. I mean, <laughs> should you be drinking right now? It's before noon. I don't like my family because it's, uh, it's overcrowded. Really? My parents had five daughters because they were trying to fix the marriage with a boy. <laughs> yeah, they're divorced. <laughs> five daughters, I mean, nobody had the upper body strength to keep that marriage together. <laughs> That's a joke that the women won't laugh at and the men are scared too. Um, now listen, whenever I tell people I have four sisters, they always react the same way. They always go, oh, your poor father. Like it's a disease. I'm like, he did it. He had three girls. He tried for a boy. The man had a gambling problem. You don't shake your dick like a pair of dice. I hope you get one with a fuse this time. No. I have one sister who's a nurse. And uh, you know, I know I was giving the healthcare heroes shit earlier, but I do want to say this on her behalf. Nobody appreciates nurses as much as they do. <laughs> They're heroes. They are, and they'll tell you. <laughs> now, it's not that what they're doing isn't heroic, it is. It's, it is a heroic thing. Um, but it's a bummer to hear about. And they never shut the fuck up. <laughs> Don't ever ask a nurse how her day went. No, you're gonna get a story that's gonna fuck yours up, right? <laughs> it will. I called my sister, hey, how's your day? It was pretty rough. <laughs> like, surprise. <laughs> I took the bait, I was like, what happened? She goes, I had to pull the plug on my favorite patient. I was like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> your favorite patient? What do you do to the ones you don't like? She hated that. She was so mad. Not everything has to be a fucking joke, Rosie. And I was like, no, you set it up. I feel like I knocked it out of the park. This was teamwork. We're both killing. <laughs> yeah. We've been through a lot of shit together. A lot of shit. I have one sister that passed away. And she passed away a long time ago, 18 years ago. So I want everybody to know everyone's okay in the family, you know, especially her. I mean, I've never been dead, but I could use a forever nap. I'm fucking tired. And I've never heard her complain about it. So no news, no news is good news. Anyways, she is the sister I get along best with. <laughs> She's a good listener. <laughs> Whenever I say I have a dead sibling, and anybody with a dead family member can probably relate to this, people get real fucking weird. 
They get so overly sympathetic. It's like you feel like they lost someone. I don't know if this has happened to you, but whenever I say I have a dead sibling, they go, how did she die? I'm like, she drowned. And then they go, how did she drown? I'm like, it's water. Uh, it wasn't Willy Wonka's chocolate river. It, But I realized they're not asking, how did she drown? They're asking, where did she drown? That's really what they're asking. And they can't ask it like that, because then it just sounds like they're gonna go look for her. <laughs> like start a search party. So I have to fill in the blanks, and I hate filling in the blanks of this part of the story, because I, this is tragic and awful, worst thing that happened to my family. But my sister drowned in a jacuzzi which is like a really festive place to drown. <laughs> it throws off the story, guys. It's like hearing somebody got shot in the head with a t-shirt cannon. <laughs> what the fuck? It makes it seem less sad, it does. And I want it, people to know that it was sad, you know, but if you hear somebody <laughs> died in a boating accident, and then you hear it was a private yacht, you know, somewhere in the back of your mind, you go, nice. <laughs> Not bad. The jacuzzi is where I lost my virginity to make it special. <laughs> and she took that from me. So who's the real victim? I was at the funeral. I turned to my sister, the living one, and, uh, <laughs> The other one could have been there, I'm not sure. Uh, I turned to her, I go, hey, uh, why are we all wearing black? And she goes, it's to honor the dead. And I was like, why? She goes, it's what the dead would have wanted. And I was like, well, I feel like if we're wearing what the dead would have wanted, we'd all be in life jackets. Are you okay, sir? Can you, are you having a good time? Yeah, I was gonna say, tell your face if you are, fuck. I was like, why isn't this Netflix? Um, I don't know, man, I, I do have a, I have a dark sense of humor, you know? And you seem like a good guy with like a good heart. And you know what they say about good people, they have the best senses of humor. Um, That's the thing, you've been through a lot of loss. You start to just kind of accept it. It's like a part of life, you know? Like I had to put my cat down two years ago and that's, that's sad. But she slept 22 hours a day. It's like two more hours. I <laughs> couldn't be bothered. <laughs> I said to the vet, I was like, she's doing what she loves. I, it's fine. <laughs> now, listen, if you've ever put a pet down, I'm sorry, first of all, it's terrible. Um, but usually you can tell when their soul leaves their body, right? You can tell. I don't think cats have one. Because the only way I could tell my cat was dead was that she was letting me hold her. I was like, oh my God, she likes me. Oh, she's gone, she's gone. It is, I'm more of a dog person than a cat person. Yeah, that's correct. I think dogs are better than people too, you know? They're the only beings that are grateful enough to look at a pile of vomit and go, there's still food in there. I can make this work. My dogs are the best. I mean, I've, I've lost a dog before where like right after my cat died, it was like a year later, I, my dog died. And I gotta tell you something, I would have snapped my cat's neck to save my dog. No problem. And if you're a cat person and you think I'm a monster, I want you to know, I would have snapped your cat's neck to save my dog. Okay. Losing a dog is harder than losing certain relatives, you know? 
It's like, if my uncle died, I would be sad. But he's also kind of racist. <laughs> like, my dog never said Orientals. I'm not... <laughs> my dogs, I got two dogs now, and they, they love me so much. It's like, dogs will love you like you're a god. They really will. They'll, like, if I forget to feed them one day, they look at me like pilgrims. They're just... The harvest hasn't come yet. <laughs> but the human woman will smile upon us. There will be a great feast. We fucking hope. I have two dogs. One that I got in quarantine, who ruined my sex life for at least three weeks. Uh, she would just scream human screams in the other room. Yeah, it was good practice for having kids because now I know if I want to fuck my husband, I have to lock him in a cage, but... <laughs> she's great, she's like a 10 pound mixed breed uh, whore, that's what she is. She's just a whore. I, I take her to the dog park, she like pounces in there, she'll let a pit bull climb on top and then she'll look back at it, it's fucked up. <laughs> takes all of her pictures with her tongue hanging out. <laughs> People can see what that mouth do. <laughs> Those are her words, not mine. <laughs> you go, what breed is she? I'm like, she's a North American dick hound. That's what she is. <laughs> My other dog, he's sweet. He's like a little 40 pound, uh, just idiot. Just a sweet idiot, you know? <laughs> just, they're the best. He's just a border collie. His name's Charlie. And uh, yeah, and Charlie loves me so much. I mean, he loves me like he got separation anxiety over the pandemic, which means that when I leave, he tries to eat through the wall to get to me. I have never loved anything so much in my life where if they locked me in a room, I would try to eat my way back to them. Every time I leave the house, he's just shawshanking his way, teeth first, back into my arms. I took him to the vet, I was like, what the fuck do I do? That was like, we gotta get him canine Xanax. And I'm a white lady, so I was like, sign me up. Let's do it. You might think it's ridiculous to give your dog Xanax. No, it works, right? Yeah, I took one of those. I'm not worried about him anymore. He's to me now. No, I don't take a Xanax. Not because I wouldn't, but because I'm in recovery. Uh, this town has no idea what recovery means. I just realized that. You guys were like, what's that? Nashville's like, yeah, we drink at the gym. Um, I'm 13 years sober. Uh, don't, don't clap, because I'll relapse. It's too much. Don't do it. I don't recommend it. If you got a drinking problem, work it out. Just make it happen. I don't know. Because this isn't worth it. This is like raw dogging the world emotionally. If I wake up in a mood, that's my day. That's it, folks. Just got to hunker down and wait for that to pass like a herpes outbreak. It is. And the worst part about it is, as an adult, you kind of get to this point where you realize every gathering, every birthday, holiday, it's all an excuse to get drunk, right? And as an alcoholic, I know in my heart that I'd be better at it <laughs> than everybody. So I have to sit there like a benched professional athlete. <laughs> like I'm just here for the love of the game. <laughs> yeah. 13 years into sobriety, I still think like an alcoholic and an addict. I still have like an addict's mindset. Like when I heard there was an opioid crisis, I just thought we were running out of heroin. <laughs> I was like, oh fuck, we gotta make more, this is bad. <laughs> we're all gonna get robbed. <laughs> all our weird cousins are gonna come home soon. <laughs> Asking to borrow the TV. Uh, my friend was like, no, there's too much, there's too much. Heroin. I was like, well, that's, that's not a crisis. That's a boom, okay? <laughs> yeah, it's only an opioid crisis if you're not on opioids. <laughs> I 
don't know if you guys have seen anybody on heroin, but they don't seem too worried about it. They're not. They look like they solved the opioid crisis. Now they can take a nap. <laughs> that was fun. Um, I do care a lot about other addicts. I relate to them a lot. I get along with them a lot. And, uh, and one thing that I was really worried about this year is because addicts don't, we don't like to spend a lot of time. Well, we actually love to spend time alone because we can hoard our, hoard our supplies and draw the blinds and become just pieces of shit. That's our favorite thing, right? But it's not good for us. And so when we all went into quarantine, I was a little worried. I was like, I think suicide rates are gonna go up, you know? I mean, you'd have to mean it because Amazon's gonna run out of rope. <laughs> I'm not saying suicide's funny. I'm just saying it's kind of hilarious to want to kill yourself and have to wait three weeks for the rope to arrive. <laughs> He's like, man, if this rope doesn't get here, I'm gonna fucking kill myself. <laughs> I've watched every, every movie there is to watch on Netflix this year. Every single thing there is. I've watched European films. And uh, if you haven't seen a European film, I can save you a little time. It's just a woman walking through the snow, having a miscarriage. That's every <laughs> European film I've ever seen. My husband likes to watch them. I don't know why, because he can feel cultured and go to a party and ruin a conversation. I have no idea <laughs> what the appeal is, but I started watching documentaries as well. I think we all can get on board with murder documentaries, right? <gasps> yeah, that's something. I've watched every murder documentary and I go to sleep to these now, yeah. which is disturbing. Yeah. I'm like, how fucked up are my regular thoughts <laughs> that Ted Bundy is my lullaby? It's pretty fucked. Now, this last joke, um, I do feel like you guys are gonna bail on it, but <laughs> I'm gonna go for it, because it's the album recording. Right. And, no, don't, it's fine, don't, you don't have to fake it. Um, it feels awful. Uh, <laughs> I, I watched the Michael Jackson documentary, and that was pretty recent. And um, yeah, I know, I'm late on this, but so was the documentary, so. <laughs> I think we can all agree it was a little past its due date. I watched that shit and uh, I watched it with my sister. She goes, we can't listen to his music anymore. And I go, well, why not? She goes, if you listen to his music now, you're putting money in the hands of a pedophile. And I go, well, he's dead, so he doesn't have hands. And you're a nurse, so you should know that. <laughs> I was like, even if he was alive and I was giving him money, it's not like it takes a ton of money to wine and dine a kid. <laughs> All it takes is a van and a bag of pixie sticks. It's not a high budget operation. <laughs> that being said, Michael Jackson, he put a lot of money into manipulating his victims. He did, right? He would fly them in like private jets. He bought them houses, moved their entire families out to LA. And, you know, I watched this and as a woman in my 30s, I was like, he's kind of a gentleman. <laughs> no straight guy has ever taken me on a Ferris wheel, let alone built me one in his front lawn. <laughs> So if there's anything positive we can glean from this, it's not to stop listening to Michael Jackson's music. It's that straight guys could take a note <laughs> about the art of seduction from leaving Neverland. The target audience is different, but the tactics should be the fucking same. You wanna be with us? You better groom us. Groom us like a pedophile would, okay? I wanna see pedophile effort from now on. Nobody's gonna get in your van unless it's a BMW. You guys, you've been fucking amazing tonight. Thank you so much. This has been the best night of my life. Thank you. I love you. Bye.
Yeah, it's not too hard. Say it one more time. I'm trying too hard to be offensive. Right, right, right. And uh, I enjoy that kind of comedy on both sides, but she was just trying too hard to make it. She was trying to punch too hard. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, some of the jokes were funny, you know, yeah, good, yeah. good. But it just, she, she was working it too hard to be on the edge. And she didn't have to be because she's a funny girl. Yeah. Understood, understood. Thank you so much for that. Do, do you mind if we, oh, careful. Thank you very much.